And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at a game called Dragon Realm. Dragon Realm, a game of goblins and gold. It's not the first time you'll see alliteration in this game, but this is kind of in a series of games that Game Right has been doing, and I, I don't want to say that this is a kids focus game. It's a family style game of rolling dice, collecting cards, a little bit of there's a little bit of push your luck in the game to some degree and there's area control. It's a bunch of things thrown together but I think you might enjoy. Here's how it plays. In this game, players are trying to get the most gold, sending out your adventurers. And what you're going to do that is you're going to make a pile of locations. You'll have a dragon at the bottom, and then a one, two, and the three, and a one, two, and three. And there's plenty of different locations, so every game will be slightly different. You'll put out the top three locations, like this, plus the adventurers academy here. Each player is going to get eight of their tokens, their little adventurers. You'll have some goblins. Players are going to start with a handful of adventurer cards. These cards go from 1 to 12, five different suits, and you got some dice. On a player's turn, they have two different actions that they can take. You can rest, where you'll just draw adventures, and when you, you know, draw one, you'll replace it, or you can draw one off the top of the pile. A couple cards, when you draw them, will make something happen. A rock slide will make people pass cards to the right or left. And if you draw goblins, as they'll either say right, left, or middle, you'll put a goblin on one of the open adventure spots on that particular card. The other thing a player can do is they can explore. You're going to play adventure cards on one of them. There are three ways to explore. One of the ways you can explore is sneaking, searching, or storming. And each location is going to have a number matching those. When you sneak, you're simply just trying to play cards that are in a row. So it doesn't matter what color the cards are. I could play an 8, 9, 10, and 11 here. That would be a way to sneak. When I search, that's the second number in one of those cards, you're trying to play cards that are the same number. So here I'm playing three sixes. And when I storm, I'm playing cards that are the same suit. So here they're all blue cards. Well, however many cards you play, you're going to roll that many dice. So let's say I played four cards, and I'm doing this one here. This is an eight. I'm going to roll these, and I need to get an eight or higher. So I rolled a three, four, five, I mean, seven, eight, nine. I did score nine or higher, so I get to put one of my adventurers on one of the open spots. Since this one has a gold ring around it, I actually put, get to put out two adventurers. If there's no gold ring, you'd simply just put out one adventurer when you do it. If you fail, then you will place one adventurer up here in the Adventurers Academy and take the cards back in your hand. On future turns, you can always discard these adventurers from the Academy to get plus ones to your roll. Now, when a location is completely filled up here, uh, with all the spots are filled up, then you're going to look at the card itself. Whoever has put the most adventures there will get five coins. Second most will get three. The numbers are different on the different cards. Uh, if there's a tie, you add the numbers together. If there's a tie for second place, you split those. And then whoever wins it gets the card because you have these seals on it. And whoever has the most of these at the end of the game is going to get an additional five coins. You'll also remove the location and put a new location out there. When the final location, the dragon, has been defeated, at that point the game is going to end. Now at the beginning of the game, each player is going to get some artifacts. You can take two level ones or one level two. Sometimes they give you a special ability. This turns ones into twos. This is a one-time use. But some of them will also give you points at the end of the game. So you'll take any points you might have got from those, plus the coins and stuff that you've added. Plus, remember, whoever has the most of these seals will get five coins, and whoever has the most is the winner. The artwork on the cards is really fantastic. As you look at these Dragon's Lair, Dragon's Gate, Dragon's Ruins, Dragon Rock, Troll Tavern. I'm just really impressed with these. They're also really easy to see what all the different symbols do. And each player has these cards that tell you 
how sneak, search, storm work, and if there's a gold ring, you put two adventures, and then a summary of what you do over the course of the game. Nice wooden meeples, nice little wooden goblins. By the way, I didn't mention it earlier, but the goblins are basically just put on cards that hog up spaces, and if a goblins win majority for any reason, then those coins are just lost. And then the, the deck here. All the cards are really good quality with linen finish on them. You can tell the difference of them between color and the person that's on them. The artwork's well done. This is just a really nice production. The dice are extremely high quality and everything fits in a plastic insert. Just a really well put together game. Dragon Realm is a great family game. There's a lot of simple, easy decisions. What, collect some cards. So when you rest, all right, I'm going to try to take cards that are the same number, the same, you know, one number off or the same color. And you look at each card. So when I look at this card, for example, of the Sorcerer's Castle, and so I need a five if I'm going to get the same number. Now, getting the same number is probably the hardest thing to do in the deck. It's not hard, but it's probably harder than the other ones. I need a seven for the getting a run, or seven if I'm getting a flush. I'm using this terminology because it's you know terminology a lot of people are going to understand. And by doing that, I have I'm deciding which ones I'm going to go to, which target number. So seven. So I know the dice have a single one and a single four, and then some twos and threes. And, okay, so what's kind of the average here? And it's a neat way to teach kids. And one thing that's really good about the game is if you muff up, if you fail, you just roll terribly. I roll three ones and a two. I wasn't expecting to get that. You get your cards back. You even get a plus one to use in a future turn. So, yes, you've lost a turn, but it's not the end of the world, and that's fantastic. So you could even push it. I'll just play a couple cards. And there is a hand limit of nine, so you also can't sit there and go, I'm rolling nine dice. Well, there's only... I think six dice in the game anyway. But it, it has those mechanisms, you know, you where do you want to go? What target number are you going for? What kind of cards are you collecting? A lot of nice, easy, fun decision points in the game, and it plays through very quickly. 30-minute game or so, and the artwork and the theme, it's kind of a lighthearted fantasy style theme. I really like it. This is a, a solid game. It's an intro game. If people haven't played many games, it's one to introduce to them. But it's one I think that uh, parents and kids can play together, and they're both going to enjoy it. Maybe kids more. So great component quality, fantastic art, a solid game, uh, which is kind of a teaching tool to many different mechanisms that you'll see in more complex games. I like it a lot. Dragon Realm. Dice Tower Judgment approved. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.